I knew you were there. You're sneaky. I wasn't even typing. <laughs> This is the last video of the series, and um, I, uh, I'm going to tell you what I think about uh, foundation grid framework versus bootstrap grid framework. And I'm going to do that because I said I would, even though it's late. If you missed the other videos, if you skipped ahead, let me show you a few seconds of what you missed. Wasn't that delightful? Are you sad you missed it? It's okay, I forgive you. But let's talk about what we wanted to talk about. Let's talk about your feelings. Just kidding, I just, I'm just doing this all night, like this. <laughs> I've got a table now, I've got a Ikea. Ah, about to run out of battery. Okay, first let's talk about the, the grid. Okay, the grid itself in foundation, I think was easier to understand and use and kind of manipulate to get what I wanted out of it. There are lots of things that, that, was, that were in the foundation framework grid that are not in bootstrap grid. Um, things like collapsing columns, we didn't get into it, but you can do source ordering where you can like switch columns around uh, even though they're not like that in the DOM. Uh, pushing and pulling, offsetting, just things like that we didn't really talk about. Some of those are in Bootstrap, but I think that the foundation grid was a little bit more robust and, uh, and I liked it. The, the naming scheme, even though it was a little bit more verbose, it was easier to read and understand what you were doing, where and you're doing like XS-3 and whatever in the bootstrap grid. You were a little bit more verbose saying like small-3 um, and saying column every time instead of just kind of like assuming that it's a column because you have an XS-3. I do not like in foundation how the rows max out at such a slim dimension. Although as you could, as you saw in the last video, at the end of it, we just quickly overrid that default. I think, I mean, it kind of makes sense why they would do that because if you're not gonna pay attention to things and you're just gonna let foundation make decisions for you, they're gonna make conservative decisions. Um, that makes sense, but it was nice that I could just kind of jump in and say, no, this should not be, it was at 62 M's, it should be 80, something a little bit more breathable, a little bit more, a little wide, but um, Bootstrap, had a little, it used it used media queries a little bit heavier in that situation where anywhere you are it just snapped wider or, or smaller. So I, th I think I'd go with bootstrap in that way. But foundation is easily remedied, that the smallness of foundation is easily remedied just by overriding that row uh, style. The typographic uh, tools in bootstrap I felt were a little bit more robust. They had helper classes like um, muted and lead that we had to write ourselves this time and there was other things in there as well like the media object and a few other kind of like wells and uh, you know just defaults that are just helpful here and there um, don't make a huge difference I mean they're easy enough to write I would never like say like I could never use foundation because they didn't have a muted class but they are just a nice little add-on and when things are standardized you know and you and you if you're a designer and you pass things over to a developer or if you're a developer and you pass it over to your developer friend to you know help you out or whatever if you're already speaking the same language and you'd be like yeah I know I wrote a class for for muted if it's like already in the in the framework that you're both decided and agreed on it's kind of nice that they don't need to like look through this to the the code or your docs or whatever to find out how to turn the text gray, right? If they already know it up, up front. I mean, that's the point of a, of a framework, right? So everybody kind of speaks the same language from the beginning. So I like, I like how Bootstrap was a little bit more, um, uh, you know, thoughtful with their typography. Uh, if I didn't make that clear already, I think the Bootstrap offered a little bit more usable components. They, the components in uh, Foundation, we didn't really use any of them. Uh, there's like a slider and there's like a tour and things like that are nice, I guess, if, you, if like that's specifically what you're looking for. But I think the ones in the Bootstrap are a little bit more kind of like flexible, like the media object or um, the, the, the navigation, the, the tab bars and things like that were a little bit more like just like very basic were the ones in uh, Bootstrap were like really specific, I, I felt. Um, I didn't show you a few, like like last night, again, I, I, did, I did this last night and to make sure I could do it. I, I learned through so I didn't have to stumble through it as much with you guys. And then um, like the, the tab bar gave me a hell of a time, or a heck of a time, because it, it was like just, it's kind of frustrating to me actually a lot until I 
figured out which version I wanted to use. There was like three different versions in, in Foundation. Overall, I would say that I liked the, the grid system better in Foundation than in Bootstrap. I think that just structurally it is, is easier to use and it made a lot more sense um, just looking and reading. Uh, so that was a big plus to me. I think that with any of these kind of uh, grid, uh, you know, class-based grid nesting div kind of uh, frameworks, I don't think that I could do them without Jade. Jade is the winner here because Jade makes it really easy to indent, uh, nest in and out nest, indenting and out denting your, your, um, your markup so that you can easily use like all these nested uh, elements to get the grid to be what you need to be. Wherein if I had to like write opening and closing tags for everything that I was trying to do there, it would just been so frustrating. And, I, and I'm sure that you've had this situation before where you're like trying to count like, okay, how many, and you're closing them to figure out, okay, no, that one is open and closed properly. Where's the open div tag? Like how many times have you had that problem? I've had it a billion times. So Jade really, really, really helps using something like this out like tenfold. Um, that's gonna be it for my review. I would say, uh, as a summary, the, f the, f the grid wins for foundation, but the, the other stuff, I think Bootstrap is a little bit better. Um, Thank you so much for watching this video. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. If you are interested in seeing more of this type of video, um, if you want another series like this, please let me know in the comments down below and let's vote, let's do this, let's vote again. So the DevTips question of the week is, which is the next video in this series that you would like to see? Which grid framework would you like the next video to be about? Vote in the comments below and the next video will be in the next video in this series, not next week's video, but the next video that I do this in this series will be that the winner, right? The one who gets the most upvotes. Not not who gets mentioned the most or who the coolest person comments it the most times or something. But the one person who names the grid framework and then it gets the most thumbs ups. That's the one that I'll, that I'll be using. Okay, so if you wanna write down Susie, skim the comments to see if Susie has been written already because if there's two Susies, that's just still one vote. Okay, that's it. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so excited. It's, it's 2015, guys. We're doing grids junk right off the bat. Look at that, Pow, off the bat. I'm, uh, I, I'm just kind of rambling because I know the battery's gonna run out like any second. <laughs> I'm just kind of ecstatic that we're done. I was like really like nervous about this whole thing, but now we've got like 11 seconds left on the clock. Everything's blinking. Things are, we did it. Thanks for tuning in. Keep on hacking. <laughs>